Welcome to my block party. Glad you can make it. The only triple doubles you get come with fries. Last time you blocked someone, you were online. I can do this all day. Your moves are just gay. Using gay to mean dumb or stupid, not cool. Not cool. Not in my house, not anywhere. It's not creative, it's offensive to gay people. And you're better than that. All righty, the NBA just releasing this PSA in time for the playoffs. It's a message. Anti-gay slurs are not acceptable. I was there for Suns forward uh, Grant Hill's part when he taped his part of that PSA. Just hours after that taping, Kobe Bryant made headlines when he aimed a gay slur at a referee. And now in the middle of all of this, we have Suns president Rick Welts. He came out uh, about being openly gay last weekend. Now at 9, here to talk about that decision is Suns president Rick Welts himself. Thank you for joining us for right out of the gate. What led to your decision to come out at this time? Well, I, you know, it's probably the culmination of a long personal journey for me where uh, I really reached a point in my life where I felt the personal sacrifices that I had to make uh, were no longer outweighed by what I perceived to be the, the concern about what effect this might have on my career. Talk, talk about those personal sacrificing. What were you giving up? by not being openly gay well, in the professional realm. Yeah, I mean, uh, you guys love your coworkers. I love my coworkers. I work with remarkable people and, and I really kind of constructed, I guess, a barrier to a part of my life that most of us don't worry about sharing with mm -hmm. our friends and our coworkers, a uh, barrier that everyone respected throughout my career. Uh, that comes at some sacrifice. Plus, you know, if you want to have somebody in your life who, who is incredibly important to you, mm -hmm. that person has to live kind of an existence really that's odd, very apart and pretty much invisible. It takes a it takes a great toll on a relationship. And Rick, the sports world, obviously kind of a, a manly place, if some would say, that, kind that of? might not yeah, that <laughs> might not <laughs> accept like this. Uh, that might, some might think wouldn't accept this. I mean there's never been an NBA player who's been openly gay. Do you hope maybe in 10, 20 years that might be different? I doubt it's gonna be ten or twenty years. Uh, you know, I've heard from commissioners, players, team owners coaches uh, in the last uh, few days. Uh, you know, I think the problem really is that there's, being the first is very scary yeah. because there's no one else out there that I could have looked at to mm -hmm. see how this would affect their career or, or what opportunities they may have. It's magnified for a player. Mm -hmm. It's a very short career, uh, has a lot at stake. Um, there's nobody out there who's been able to take that first step and, and for some other player to say, okay, well, it really wasn't all that bad. One of the first people that you went to was Steve Nash, and you told him, and, and right. he supported you. Was there any fear in all of this that you would be outed? No, uh, not at all, not at all. The people I approached are all, if you look at really the list of people, are really all thought leaders in their own right. They're very, uh, they're very powerful people who've made very pow powerful statements throughout their careers, the Bill Russells, the David Stearns, the Steve Nashes, and I had no concern whatsoever. My only question was would, would they be willing to be a part of telling the story, and, and Steve was amazing. Of all the people that I met with, he was probably the most indignant about just why is this an issue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. right? But, a not a big but, deal. But at the yeah. same time, understanding that it really was right. in the sports industry. Now, you came out publicly last weekend, but when did you come out as a gay man to your friends and your family? Uh, you know, in my early 20s, really. Uh, I have an amazingly supportive family, uh, great group of friends, uh, and that, you know, that's a great strength to fall back on. I just had a discussion this morning. I apologize. You can, you can jump in. But I wanted to talk about the age. You said in your 20s. Mm -hmm. I just had a discussion with this morning with one of our coworkers, and he said it doesn't matter what age. It's difficult, whether you're young or whether you're older, to come out. Well, uh, you know, privately is one thing, publicly yeah. is mm -hmm. another. And that, you know, that was really the debate for me. I certainly mm -hmm. reached the point where I wanted to reach out to the people I'd worked with, the, the wonderful people at the Suns that I work with now. So improve the quality of those relationships. The question was if doing it in a really public way mm -hmm. potentially could do some good beyond my own personal agenda. Mm -hmm. And that was the conclusion that I reached. Publicly, again, in a world that uh, the world of sports that doesn't necessarily always accept this. Let's jump back. I want to follow up. I said 10 to 20 years, and you said you were kind of surprised by that. You think it's going to be sooner? I mean, how oh, soon yeah. do you think? How long no, do you think I, it'll be before we see a, a, a openly gay player? It's going to be an intensely personal decision. We yeah. see it now occasionally mm -hmm. in Europe. I think you know they're a little ahead of us on this issue, but I think where we are in men's team sports right now is a little out of step with where our 
society. As I was talking to my 12-year-old uh, niece, I'm going to see her in her musical this weekend, mm -hmm. and, and she was so excited on the phone on Monday to say that her coolness factor in her school <laughs> had gone way up because Absolutely. I was her uncle. And I don't think that would have been the case when yeah, I was 12 years well, old. Well, let's talk about school. One of our viewers, Ellie Rakoff, writes, Rick, how can we teach our LGBT youth how to be resilient in the face of bullying? Obviously, I want to see bullying end, but until that happens, do you have any recommendations? Well, I mean, part of it is just to, to be able to have the discussion. I mean, that's that's a lot of what this is all about. I've gotten, you know, a mil, you know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of emails from, of course, people, a lot of people I've worked with throughout my career. I think the ones I'm going to hold most dear are the ones from people I don't know. Yeah. I've, I've gotten an unbelievable number from parents, from kids themselves, who are trying to find their way. They're just trying to figure out a way to, to make their lives make sense to them when this is a part of it that, is not really the way they wanted it to be. Right. And I think that uh, the fact that we're able to have this discussion, to, to talk openly about it, is half the battle. Now, you've received a lot of support. Have you had any backlash? I, I, this is going to be impossible for you to believe. I was just telling one of my coworkers before we went on the air, you know, I don't know, five, six hundred emails. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of texts. Last night, I finally got to go through, you know, 50 or 60 snail mail letters. Uh, not one wow. of those was anything but incredibly supportive or thankful or wanted to tell me their story. People have written me five or six page letters about their own story that can take me a long time to follow up on. I, I, that I'm surprised at. I mean, I really and you hope for it. That's encouraging. Well, it's, it, it's it's encouraging, but I, I, that actually surprises me a little bit. And I'm sure that's it. You're, it's adding to your strength every day. We appreciate yeah. you coming on and, and talking me. about this Thank and, you. and so openly with us. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you, Rick. Thanks.